You don't really know much about Halloween. Welcome to another unboxing video. This episode, we are going to be uh, opening this box that I just got uh, a couple days ago here. I have opened it to uh, get everything ready to take out to talk about, but I have not actually opened anything beyond that internally, so there is no... Oop, I hit my microphone. Sorry about that. There is no uh, open content as of yet. That is uh, something that I do separately. So uh, this is one part is uh, four of the uh, Blu-rays that I got from the sale that they had um, right at the end of the subscriber uh, event. And then the three of them are the first three from the um, subscriber subscription thing. I don't know what to call it at the moment. And then there's one that is not in here yet that, 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 that will be on the way shortly that I'll explain in just a moment. So. Um, all right, the first one we have here is from 1988. These are all blind buys, by the way, the, these four. The other ones, of course, are all blind because they're part of the subscription package. I haven't seen them. Uh, so this is Grandmother's House from 1988. This is uh, directed by Peter Rader, who uh, was known for directing Escape to Witch Mountain, The Dog Whisperer, eight episodes of that show, and Hired to Kill. I don't know why he was hired to kill, but he was hired to kill some people. Uh, the stars Brink Stevens and Lynn Lesser, who most of you will know as, Hello, it's Uncle Leo from Seinfeld. He is in this, and I believe he's playing a, a bad guy role. So, uh, But this is about a couple of orphan kids who go to live with their grandparents who may or may not be murderers. And um, yeah, so sounded interesting, and it was super cheap. Can't resist. Next up, we have... Terrors from 1978. Uh, this was directed by Norman J. Warren, who also directed Bloody New Year, uh, Prey, which we'll get to in a second, and the classic Inseminoid, which if you are an exploitation film lover, you are probably already familiar with Inseminoid. Um, this stars one name that you'll recognize, which is Peter Mayhew, and if you're a Star Wars fan, you know him as Chewbacca. So uh, I'm kind of curious to see him in a role outside of Chewbacca. We'll see what he takes on here. Uh, the basic premise is, is that a filmmaker's estate has been haunted and cursed for centuries. He's been making films for centuries. Uh, by a supernatural force killing people, his cousin sh shows up, and this is what happens when my cousin shows up. Uh, it's, it's a riff on the gothic Italian horror films and giallos. Um, it sounded interesting, you know, nothing more than that, although... Uh, there is a part where a character is, is attacked by movie paraphernalia, which um, of that paraphernalia, nine of the uh, prints that are being chucked at them or whatever were copies of Saturday Night Fever. Just a little fun fact I found out in doing some research. Uh, now we have Prey, not uh, like the MC Hammer song, but you know, like somebody who's hunting. Uh, this is from 1977. It is also directed by Norman J. Warren, who directed our previous film, Terror. Um, I couldn't find anybody in here that I recognize it was a celebrity, so you'll just have to take my word that there's people in it that are starring. Uh, this is about a shape-shifting alien that uh, infiltrates a country house of occupy, occupied excuse me, by two lesbians and proceeds to study them for sinister reasons. Sounds kind of exploitation-y and a very strange plot. They... The alien thing looks kind of like a cat. I'll put an image of it here so you guys can see it. It's kind of weird. I've heard some interesting things about this. Uh, it's supposed to be a sci-fi film, but it's kind of a mishmash of genres, which sounded too odd to pass up. Uh, plus, it was only shot in 10 days, and it's all handheld camera, and uh, the two leads had to have their shots because the water that they're in at one point in the film was literally a dumping ground. So sounds fascinating. has a fascinating history, so if even for that, 
that's something worth checking out. Uh, next up, we have the classic Witch Trap, which you're probably going to be like, I know Witch Trap, but I don't know if you do. Uh, this is from 1989, directed by Kevin Ten Tenney, who did the uh, kind of cult classic Night of the Demons. Uh, he did the fairly awful Pinocchio's Revenge from the 90s, which I saw when I used to work at the video store back in the day. Uh, he did The Cellar, which is another movie that's on the shelf. And uh, he did Witchboard, not to be confused with Witch Trap, which um, to kind of circumvent... Well, this is a, a movie about a, a parapsychologist that try to make an inn that is haunted by an evil witch's ghost safe for guests. So pretty cut and dry, pretty safe, simple plot. Um, this sounded crazy, plus the director, you know, like I said, has some good credits. And um, it, apparently when they got done filming it, they realized that the sound effects and the sound that was recorded had to be redone. Um, and the original title was The Haunted, but because of the witch board connection, they retitled it Witch Trap. And then because of the confusion it was causing intentionally on the back of the box, they had to write uh, this motion picture is not a sequel to Witch Board. People still rented it anyway. So um, now the one that I don't have here, if you can see, uh, is Herenia Diablica, which means the uh, di diabolical inheritance. Uh, this one is, if, you've, if you're a fan of GIFs and you've ever seen the GIF of the little clown doll that looks evil but not like a doll, uh, this is the, the Mexican riff on uh, the Chucky franchise. It's from 1993, directed by Alfredo Salazar. It's actually his last film. Uh, who did, he did several of the Santo films, and uh, I'm a big Santo fan. But uh, it's about a diabolical clown doll that murders people that are cruel to him, uh, which I guess when they say him, they're meaning... The kid that is taking care of it. Um, I've seen the gift before, and I always thought it was weird. And then I saw this pop up as the one of the new releases from the February launch that didn't come with the subscriber package. And you know, it's kind of an instant buy when you have that happen. So, all right. So now we're to the three films that are the uh, the subscriber package. So the first one we have is Phase Four, which this is the one that everybody and their cousin has been talking about ever since they uh, announced that this was going to be the film that they were releasing. This is a 4K version. Uh, it's from 1974, and it's directed by Saul Bass. It's his only credit because Saul Bass is primarily known as a graphic designer. He did the, uh, the uh, credits for Psycho and North by Northwest, among other things. Uh, and so if you've seen either of those films, and you'll know exactly who I'm talking about when I say Saul Bass, you may already know who he is before I even said that. But it um, comes with the, the film, of course. Uh, a lot of packaging, which, you know, some people are really into the packaging. I enjoy it, but it's not a, you know, a, not a have to have it sort of thing. Um, I don't know if there's anything in here that's questionable. So I'm going to kind of not get too in depth with the images inside here. But if you like to read up on stuff, which I, I do, uh, this gives you a nice little background on the film. Uh, plus it, it just smells delightful, which if you're a book fanatic, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Uh, but the basic... Uh, premise of this, from what I understand, is is uh, desert ants are uh, suddenly forming a group of intelligence, and they decide to wage the war on people, us. Um, and it's up of a couple of science, up to a couple of scientists and a girl to stop them. Which I don't know if they mean a an actual girl or they mean like a, a just a random woman. But uh, I, I know nothing about this. It's got a good reputation amongst genre fans. Um, it's a huge addition, so it must be beloved either that or the folks at Vinegar Syndrome are just really into making packages for things that they like. I don't know. Um, but uh, we shall see. Now we have the Playgirls and the Vampire. That's my wife. Bless you. Um, this one is from 1960, directed by Piero Regnoli. And this one also has a nice little slipcover, which if you're into slipcovers, then... There's a little slipcover porn for you. Uh, this one is about five showgirls who are uh, trapped by a storm. Uh, they find refuge in a castle. The owner has a secret lab in the basement and has nefarious plans for them. If this sounds like a familiar plot you've seen before, it's probably because you have. Uh, Paul Nashi did a, a similar riff with the same type of plot. Um, this was, uh, for a long time, was kind of a late night TV drive-in offbeat favorite. Um, it's the first time on Blu-ray. It's a mix of Italian Gothic 
and uh, Go Go Thrills is how I saw it described. And uh, it was actually the first depiction of a nude vampire on film. So exploitation at its finest. All right, the final one and the thing that I'm kind of most excited about because I like collections, especially when they're not uh, necessarily the same film. They're like collections to kind of get an education. Uh, this one is Spanish Bloodbath, which also has an amazing cover. Um, I really like that cover a lot. I've heard good things about uh, at least two of the films in this set. One of them I've heard doesn't really belong. That happens sometimes. Um, so you kind of take the good, you take the bad. I'll let you finish that in your own head for those of you who are of a certain age. Um, but the films inside this set are uh, Night of the Skull, Violent Bloodbath, which is the one that uh, apparently has a misleading title, and The Fish with the Eyes of Gold. Sounds like uh, Giallo titles if you ask me, but uh, not an Italian film. Um, this is Spanish Giallo, so that's why they sound like that. Uh, it's from the 70s, as I said, 1974 for all three films. Um, the Night of the Skull, it's about an unexpected death of a rich relative. The reading of the will brings a motley crew of greedy family members to a mansion uh, by the sea to collect. A uh, violent bloodbath is about a DA, uh, has several former cases of horrific murders, all identical to cases he's tried and convicted in the past, uh, are now beginning to occur. So basically, things that he's tried before uh, now are starting to happen again identically. So kind of a weird mystery, I guess, they have to solve. And uh, the fish with the eyes of gold is a, a ruthless killer spreading terror in a beach town. Sounds like a slasher kind of movie, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, like I said, I've heard some mixed things, but I really like everything about this. This is a nice package. All right, so I'm going to set these aside, and uh, we will be doing more unboxing in the future. The um, announcement for the March releases is about to happen tomorrow. So excited to see what's on there. I already have a pretty good idea of at least one of them. Uh, and I'm really excited for the February, uh, or for the, uh, the the other February release that I don't have yet. It will be coming soon. So if you would like to contact myself, my wife, or have any questions for the Newly Deads, uh, you can do so at contact at thenewlydeads.com. That's your once, uh, you can also stop by our one-stop shop at uh, thenewlydeads.com to check out our uh, blog, our podcast, our other uh, videos that are on YouTube, uh, our TV show that's on Tingler Television, our upcoming events, if you'd like to come meet us live, as well as um, a bunch of other links to our other sites. We are everywhere you want to be, and we've got nearly seven days a week of content that is coming out. Uh, Friday's the only day we don't release anything at this point, but who knows, that may change. So if you want more of this or other things, please stop by and check it out. And otherwise, um, yeah, I guess that's it. So we'll see you next time when we do some more unboxing. Between the real and the unreal, the dead might be looking at Halloween, the festival of Sauron. Happy Halloween.